Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers from whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to Viewers Anonymous. What's going on? I'm Scooch Bronson. And I am S. Foster, and welcome to Viewers Anonymous, man. How we feeling? Man, we are feeling amazing today, man. Well, I'm feeling amazing today, man. I'm talking about some damn weed, like it's two people down here. <laughs> 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 now, nah, man, I'm feeling good, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? I've been I've been getting back in the groove, man. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I got some shit lined up this week. It's going to be a busy week for me. I can't wait to get to work, man. How you holding up? Man, I'm holding up all right, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, got something set up for tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully that shit uh pans out pretty well. And I got some other stuff lined up to uh, for tomorrow, man. I finally got some good news, man. You know oh shit! Saying? Yeah, man, your boy getting his tag tomorrow, man. Oh you know man, that's that's, hey, time, that's the buddy, best God. news. That's the best but, news a brother can have, man. Man, but listen, man, you know it's bad news, good news, man. Well, it depends. It depends. I don't know yeah. what time the FedEx driver is in my area now. You know uh, what I'm saying? And so it's hold on, is, that, is, is it beef though? Y'all ain't got no beef? Nah, nah, nah. It's uh, well, it's actually coming. I, mean, I, know same, I know y'all same team, but you know how sometimes y'all be having that. You know what I'm saying? That inside beef. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to jump out late on you. <laughs> nah, it it just sucks because it has to be. It's an adult signature, man. Now, uh, yeah. now they grandma might be there, you know what I'm saying? But the mom, um, you know, it just it just really depends, man. So ho- hopefully, it's a situation where somebody at home, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it can get signed for, and I get my joint. So I was happy to hear about that, the lady, and it was so funny because the lady called me right from the yeah. dealership, and like so I answered the phone. I was like, "Hello," and she was like, "Guess what I got." <laughs> and I was like, my dad. <laughs> it was so funny because she seemed like she was excited about it too. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, man. Uh, that that was some good news, man. Cause it's like, yo, I'm ready to get my stuff. You know what I'm saying? Especially, yeah. I mean, this ain't this type of pod, but you know, I was listening to uh, them talk about uh, my man that got shot up in Minnesota. Uh, uh, was it Dante, Dante Wright? Yeah, Dante Wright. And they were saying that one of the reasons they pulled him over um, was because his uh, – no, 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 no. I'm sorry. But rest in peace to him. In yes. the other situation, it was uh, the dude that didn't die, the dude that was the uh, – The lieutenant. That was the, the veteran. Yeah. 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 They said he just pulled out of a dealership with a new car. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And they pulled him over because of his dealer tag. And it's like, dude, I've been riding with these dealer tags, bro. Yeah, Hey, hey, man, this stuff is wild, dude. It's wild out right. here. Like, that's another well, subject for another day, but I was just happy about my tag. It definitely is, but um, speaking of, speaking of uh, that lane, man, things looking up in that Derek Chauvin case, man, dude might go down. So, you know, the way yeah. the way everything, all the testimonies and everything has been going, all the evidence, you know what I'm saying, all the uh, – People going up to the stand and all that kind of stuff, man. It's been looking, it's been looking promising. So hopefully, you know, we we, uh, you know, saying that family finally gets their justice, man. So that'd be a um, that'd be a a a way to bring in this, you know, saying this this 2021 to end some of this nonsense that's been going on. So, um, but like you said, man, you know, I'm saying that's a whole nother pot, um. Today, man, you know what I'm saying? We in we we in appreciation mode, man. We in celebration mode. We're talking about one of the greatest to ever do it, man. Um I is what what has this dude done, man? Actor, comedian, um uh, singer, uh, singer, uh producer. Man, well, not singer, artist, because yeah, artist. Is he more than a singer, he a, he's a music artist. Um, this man undid Everything from comedies to dramas the kids movies, you know what I'm saying, cartoons, um, family movies, um, 
at one point in time, he was the biggest comedian in the world. We are talking about none other than the legend himself, the GOAT, uh, or one of the GOATs. Let me say that because that's subjective. But one of the GOATs, man, Eddie Murphy. You know what I'm saying? This this dude is, let me tell you something. So for for people who don't know, I'm I'm the comedy guy. I'm super into comedy. As that is into the horse. So, you know what I'm saying? Like when we pick him out, it surprises the hell out of me that he actually likes some of the comedies that, you know what I'm saying, that he bring up. Cause it's like, dude, I never would have pegged you to be this guy. Like I never would have pegged you to like this movie. Like Euro Trip, it, it, I ain't gonna lie to you. That one got me. I was like, yo, this nigga like Euro Trip. I'm like, that is yeah. amazing. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, you know, cause like, I remember when it came out, you know, so like a lot of people didn't mess with it. And so it was like, man, you, you don't really get a chance to see that. You know what I'm saying? See somebody else who likes those kind of movies. Cause that's, that's yeah. one of those comedies where you gotta be like, you gotta be into it. The, the laugh at that type of, you know what I'm saying? Movie. So, um, but for me, man, Eddie Murphy is a legend. I remember watching, um, uh, my first time ever seeing him was, um, was raw. Uh, I want to say that was his first stand up, if I'm not tripping. Let me make sure because I don't want to get this wrong. Uh, no, Delirious was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raw, yeah, Delirious. yeah. Raw was second. Okay, so I seen Raw mm-hmm. first. That's the one where he was in the purple suit. And um, man, let me tell you something. When I tell you, bro, I was on my side rolling as a kid. I probably ain't even supposed to be watching this now. This is at the time that Def Comedy Jam is out. This is at the time that Comic View starting up. This is at the time where comedians were comedians. You know what I'm saying? Martin Lawrence was blowing up. You know what I'm saying? We still had, you know what I'm saying, that you know, that 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 special moment to where comedians could actually be comedians. You know what I'm saying? Bernie Max and Cedric the Entertainers was on they come up. Um, so knowing about Eddie Murphy. You know, my mom used to always watch it like uh, Beverly Hills Cop. You know what I'm saying? She would watch. Um, I remember watching The Golden Child as a kid. Um, and then I remember seeing for the first time one of my favorite movies of all time, probably my favorite movie of all time, Coming to America. Um, and then seeing Harlem Nights and then seeing probably the out of all three of those, the second funniest one. I, I hate to say it, but. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out here. The second favorite to me, uh, the second funniest to me, for real, for real, is Trading Places, um, only because of the the theme of the movie, which is hilarious. But uh, just knowing like he was, you know, what I'm saying, this stand up comedian who became this huge movie actor um, in the '80s, and then not only that, this dude was one of the stars of Saturday Night Live. Um, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, he got with Rick James and did My Girl Wants to Party All the Time. So this um, it's just been amazing just to see All right, we back. Can you hear yeah. me? Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's just been amazing to see um just how dope, you know what I'm saying, he has been through this whole little um this whole time, man. Like he he's he's really just kind of shown everybody pretty much the blueprint to do it. Um Raw is I wanna say, I don't know if it's raw or delirious, but one of those is the most um, the highest selling stand up of all time. Second is Kevin Hart. He gave Kevin Hart the blueprint. That's why Kevin Hart is um, the superstar he is today. He said it himself that he contributes a lot of his success to um, Eddie Murphy once he got to that point to where he was doing movies and everything else. Eddie was basically mentoring him and giving him the game. So, you know what I'm saying? For Kevin to learn from a legend like that and to be in the position that he's in. It only just goes to show you that dude has the juice. Oh, for sure. And I was I was more of a uh, a raw guy myself. Mm-hmm. Um, 
You know, so I can't remember what was the first thing, but I can just remember growing up and I was a huge, huge fan of the Beverly Hill Cops. Uh, not three. Um, three was, I think three was a stretch. Uh, I think there was one of those ones where they wanted to keep it going and it also was a check. Um, a lot of people like Axel Foley, so I think it's something they wanted to keep going, but I, I think the writing and the whole plot of three was was terrible. I hated that because I loved the first two Beverly Hill Cops. Man, I love yeah. him as Axel Foley, and um, I was, you know, I seen Trading Places, but it it wasn't one of my favorite. Um, but I will tell you that, you know, the first time, and I forget what the whole story is, but uh, with uh, Forty Eight Hours, but he, he wasn't the original person that they wanted for Forty Eight Hours. Forty Eight right. Hours was supposed to have been two white guys. And yeah. um, and I, I think that they wanted to spice it up because of his success on mm -hmm. Saturday Night Live. They were just like, yo, this guy is up and coming. You know, let's throw this guy in there and kind of mix it up a little bit. But um, I like 48 Hours and another 48 Hours, man. I always love how he did the rock saying, don't turn off the red light. Um, <laughs> that shit was hilarious. But hey, I will say this, though. One of his underrated movies that I thought was good. Now, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. The graphics are terrible, but you gotta remember it's 1986. When you go right. back and you look at it now, the graphics are terrible. But I like the Golden Child, man. It's like I can't find oh, the Golden Child is amazing, bro. I can't find nobody. Well, I'm glad I found one person. I can't find anybody to say that Golden Child was good. The Golden Child was, man. Listen, he hey, was, hold on, hold on. you got to be you you got to be crazy to say that the Golden Child was not one of the best movies you ever seen as a kid, dude. Man, some people, I'm telling you, dude, some people will be like, yo, they did not like the Golden Child. And I'm like, yo, I love the Golden Child. I love man. Hey, my favorite part when he was on the uh when he was on the plane mm -hmm. and he had the headphones on. He was jumping. He's like, hey, baby, dude, I'm on the Hey, that that one that one part toward the end where that motherfucking demon or dragon or whatever that was came out, that shit scared the shit out of me though. Man, listen, what got me is when he knocked down that screen and that lady had the snake body. <laughs> oh, I was like, man. yo, like hey, what listen. the hell is going on? Listen, and and to find out that what we thought was a little boy this whole time was really just a little girl. And boy, come on, man. Come Ooh. on, man. man That's crazy. See. That was crazy. Oh, I seen those, it. Those, That's how uh, I found out she was a girl. Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> you like what? If we look at them then, look at them now. You like whoa, yes, sir. Bro. Like I had no idea. But um, but yeah, like I was, I was a huge uh, uh Beverly Hills Cop. Like I just told you, I was watching Beverly Hills Cop too right before we started, man. And it's yeah. just like that that movie, man, is is so hilarious, man. That there's so many funny scenes. And 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 Taggart and the other two and Billy, like they funny. Like it's like the perfect combination of like nerdy people to put in there because they they even mm -hmm. have their moments of like being funny. But like, but Eddie though, man, he, he just he comes in, and what's so dope about that is, it's like he's taking like those street tactics, you know what I'm saying, where they don't have much to work with in Detroit, and he going out to Beverly Hills and teaching mm -hmm. these dudes really like how to be better cops you know what i'm saying because like they was dealing with crimes that were different from you know the crimes in detroit and that's what's so crazy about the first one because the first one the whole reason he even went out to beverly hills is because that his i think it was it his partner it was his partner or his friend they got mm -hmm. killed and it linked back to uh beverly hills and that's why he even went out there in the first place yeah but um <clears throat> But yeah, like I've I've been a huge fan, man, of the of the Beverly Hills Cops, man. And to think like you have, you know what I'm saying? You have Golden Child in 86, mm -hmm. Beverly Hills Cop 2 in 87, and mm -hmm. then you have damn, and this is when it really started to take a turn because now I'm not looking at writing credits and stuff like that, but what I do know is like when it came to coming to America, coming to America was like as far, I mean, look, I could be wrong on this because um, I don't have like the information right in front of me, but I felt like mm -hmm. that was like his first like film, film of like Eddie Murphy Productions type of thing. I, I feel, I feel I like say it, it might have been coming to America. 
I want to say it was because I think it was that in Harlem Knights that kind of got that to that got it to that point. Yeah, and Harlem Knights came out the next year in '89, dude. This dude. Yeah, so I think Coming to America was that first one because that's the one where he did literally him and Arsenio damn near did every character in in the movie outside of um you know what I'm saying like John Amos and yeah um Shari Headley and all them. Um, but the the one dope thing about him as well, man, like he he's the beginning of a lot of shit, right? Like, yeah. Um, he he was like he made stand up comedy a rock star thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Richard Pryor made it. Richard Pryor made it big. Yeah. See, that's what I was about to say. Richard Pryor. Yeah. Richard Pryor made it big, but Richard Pryor being his mentor. Once again, passed down that blueprint, and he turned it into a rock star thing. Like there was, there was places, you, you know, so like there was places that Richard Pryor could go and do, you know, saying stand up in. But it was, I think, it was at the point after Richard Pryor burned himself up when he did that live at Sunset Strip. That's when he got to that level. Like, damn, this dude is the shit. But Eddie was the dude in Delirious. Then when Raw came out. It went even further. So it was like, you gotta remember, like he had the he had the red leather suit like Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? He had the curl. He was on there talking about everybody. Like he ain't he ain't hold no punches. Like he was, you know what I'm saying, like letting shit go, like classic jokes from the um the uh I got the ice cream and you don't have <laughs> none because you want no welfare. Like he got all them classic jokes from you know what I'm saying, talking about, you know what I'm saying, his family issues with his dad. Talking about how his dad would drink and lock his mom in the house and shit like that. Like just classic, classic jokes. So he like really took that comedian shit like to a rock star level. So much so to where you started to see how Martin was able to do what he did when he got big. You know what I'm saying? How Chris Rock was able to do what he did when he got big. Like you you really kind of seen everybody like take that, kind of take that blueprint from um uh from Eddie, but to me, I felt like the one that did it like the, to a T was Kevin. You know what I'm saying? Like Kevin Hart was he took that shit and started doing it in stadiums and going global and he was having, you know what I'm saying, like international tours and shit. And like that he had it to where he built on it just like Eddie built on, you know what I'm saying, Richards. And then not only that, him being in 48 hours, this nigga made buddy cop movies cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not some that's you know what I'm saying that that wasn't something that was hot before. So him doing 48 hours and you know what I'm saying, him being the the comic relief, but at the same time he could still play the serious role. Like I think that he brought that, you know what I'm saying? Like he made that buddy cop shit cool because now you started to see a whole bunch of shit. Like you started to see um Riggs and Murtaugh. You started to see, you know what I'm saying, like all these other people kind of take that blueprint and, you know what I'm saying, go into it and, and try to use that same um, formula. And some of them were successful, but I don't think any of them were as successful as the 48 Hours franchise besides... Um, Lethal the Weapon. One? Yeah, Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon was the, the only one that, that, that actually got it right. And then, you know what I'm saying, we go into, like you said, him doing Coming to America and him actually producing himself and making sure everything else is good. Now he was the executive producer on his standups, but that's like, you know what I'm saying? That's not the same as movies. Yeah. So when we, when we see him in coming to America, this is something totally different. You know what I'm saying? This is a, we, we getting to see the uh, all black cast. You know what I'm saying? We getting to see um, uh, uh, African kingdom, a king, a prince, you know what I'm saying? Like we actually getting to see, black people in a good light. And this is in 1988. This ain't, you know what I'm saying? This is when, you know what I'm saying? We usually don't get a chance to see ourselves in these roles. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we getting somebody who actually putting us in these roles and making us get that, you know what I'm saying? That positive light. This thing, And this is why this is, you know what I'm saying? One of my favorite movies. Like I said, if not my favorite movie is because if you think about the time it came out in 1988 for it to be what it was for somebody to do multiple characters then on top of that, um, encapsulate black people in a great light. Like it wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? He walked outside and people were slinging rocks. Like the closest you got to that was the one part where, 
you know what I'm saying? They got out the limousine and dude was like, hey man, check it out. I got these hand drives, man. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's the closest, that's the closest it got. But outside of that, like, you know what I'm saying? You really got to see just like how dope black people were in this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? We seen somebody who owned, even though he was stealing from McDonald's, we got to see somebody who owned a whole uh, restaurant. You know what I'm saying? McDowell's mm-hmm. was the shit. You know what I'm saying? They had the golden arches. McDowell's had the golden arcs. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, he really started something in that, you know what I'm saying, in that coming to America bag. Like, and he really made it cool for black people to look good in movies. And that's why, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I fuck with Eddie Heavy, man. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Same here, man. Because Eddie, too. And then what I thought was so dope, man, was you know, to, to bring in all the old legends mm-hmm. in in um in Hall of Knights because oh, you know man. Richard Pryor, you know, because you mentioned him. And like when I was young, like I was listening because like one of my favorite jokes and and you know and I and at at that age I was at I didn't realize that like it was a real thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like because he like it, it's not that it's one of my favorite jokes. It's just like Richard Pryor got this voice, man. And it's like when, he, when he say things like it, iconic, it, it's man, funny. And he iconic. was like, and he was like, he said, man, he said one thing. He said something like, you know, one thing I do know. He was like, when you're on fire, he said people will get out of your way. The- <laughs> and I thought that shit was the funniest thing hey. I've ever heard. Hey, listen, but that had, nigga said, police don't shoot cars, police shoot niggas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that motherfucker, man. Go ahead, I'm sorry, bro. I had to get that shit out. But, That's funny, bro. But, you know, but I had no idea that he actually saw himself on fire. You Free know what basin. I'm saying? Yeah. So, man. you know, and, and he was going through what he was going through. And he, and then Eddie Murphy, too. This is the thing. Even though he's on a massive run, mm-hmm. massive run, but it's like you bring in Red Fox. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You bring in Robert Harris. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, she's not a comedian, but she's funny as hell. They bring Della in Reese. Della Reese. You know, and it's just like the people that uh, D- Danny Aiello. He, hey, Ronald, he, he had Ronaldo Ray in there. He had um uh shit. What's old boy in um who what what's Chicago's real name from Poetic Justice? Got got not that's his brother, Joe Tory. Okay, yeah, Joe he Tory. had Guy Tory in there. Guy Tory was in there. Um Charlie Murphy was in there early. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm brother, saying? Yeah. Um so, you said yeah. Robin Harris. Uh it was Man, who else is in that movie? He had a, but, he had a slew of motherfuckers in there, man. Yeah, and it's just you know, and and I think that that movie, I think the greatest thing about that movie is just that giving these people that that respect that they deserve. Because like when you think mm-hmm. of Red Fox, you know, you think of you know Steph, Sanford and Son. You know what Mm-mm. I'm saying? Like, he, well, no, not me. I mean, well, go ahead. Now you're right, but not me. Well, I mean, I mean, like. I I haven't really seen him in a lot of movies. Right. No, I'm you know talking. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about stand up. No, stand-up. you was you was yeah. right when you said what you said. Though I was just saying, not me. I, that's my favorite comedian. Yeah, and it, it was just great for him to, you know, what I'm saying to bring them in on something mm-hmm. when because he, he's gotten to the, a level. I mean, we're talking 1989 because like this is his second film. That's an Andy Murphy production. You know what I'm yeah. saying. And for him to take that second one and to bring in all of these legends, and then like he bring in like I don't know if he was his mentor, but I know that Richard Pryor is a guy that he looked highly on. Oh so, no, Richard, it's it's documented. Richard Pryor is his mentor. Matter of fact, in um, in was it? I want to say it wasn't raw. I think it was delirious where he was talking about how Bill Cosby's son had came to uh, see him in in concert. And then he was like, yeah, man. He was like, Bill was mad at me and shit. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I didn't know that, you know what I'm saying? The son was out there cussing and shit. So he said, Bill called me and said, 
uh, you can't be out there cussing in your show. He was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, Bill. What I say? You can't say filth, flour, and flour, and filth. He was like, he said, <laughs> I ain't so never like, said filth, flour, and filth. Yeah, yeah, I ain't never said no filth, flour, and flour, and filth. But frankly, I'm offended uh, that you called. <laughs> Fuck you. And he was like, uh, he said, so, man, I hung up the phone. No, he said, you can't say. And he said, Fuck. Or whatever, and he was like, "Man, fuck that shit." He was like, "So I called Richard, and Richard was like, man, did the motherfuckers laugh?'" He said, "Yeah." He said, "Did the motherfuckers pay their money?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, tell Bill to have a coke and a smile and shut the fuck up." <laughs> he said, shit, "Tell bro. Bill." He said, "Tell Bill." He just took my dick. <laughs> Hey, but yeah. so funny, but I'll, hey, oh, bro, God. Man, I'm telling you, bro. Like, but it's but it, it it just went to show you, you know, what I'm saying, like, even the fact, like you said, like the fact that he had him in Harlem Nights, you know, what I'm saying, like the role that he had him playing in Harlem Nights, just let you know, like that shit was, um, that shit was for real, for real, man. Like, um, <clears throat> but just to add a couple more in, he had Jasmine Guy in that movie, he had Tommy from Martin in that movie, yep. he had, um. He had uh, what is I can't never get this nigga oh. name right. He had Joanna Man in the movie. Yeah, had, yeah. Uh, <laughs> who else did he have in the movie? I forgot old girl name. I forgot Sunshine name. Yeah, I feel I always forget her name too. And then uh, cause she had a nice little run. And then who else? Yeah, yeah he did. had somebody else in there. Oh, um, the, the boxer dude that that was stuttering. I forgot. Oh yeah, the too. stutters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he. I, <laughs> I'm gonna knock him the fuck out. <laughs> That's what I said, bro. That's what I said. But nah, go ahead. You right though, man. He he had some legends in that joint, bro. Yeah, man, that was dope, man. And then let's not forget about his relationship with uh with Michael Jackson and that man. remember the time video. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And we all know when it comes to videos, listen at me. Ain't nobody got no no music video run like Michael Jackson. My God, Michael Jackson made movies. You know, so he Bro, made remember the film. time was that shit. You talking about I, okay. having a star studded event? Yeah, he had a, he had a bunch of stars in it. But Man, you know what, what I'm saying? But but hey, I don't give a fuck. What nobody say ain't nobody fucking with. Listen, I love Thriller, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Man, ain't nobody touching Smooth Criminal. But that's like one of the hardest. Like Smooth Criminal was just just different, dude. It yeah. was just different. But um, but that's I'm all like that. Bad was man. What's that's my spike? favorite. That's my favorite video. You ain't bad. You ain't nothing. <laughs> that's my shit, bro. <laughs> that's my shit, bro. They break out dance fighting and shit. That's why I love that video, bro. Anytime oh, I see that, bro, if I miss that part, I don't want to watch it. I want to see that oh. shit from the beginning. That's my fucking video, hey, bro. That was fucking <laughs> stupid, bro. Hey, man, that shit is hilarious. Hey, that, that shit is hilarious. But then, man, you, and then, like, listen. Boomerang, man. Oh, this is what man, another one. You know what? This is the thing about Boomerang that I did not notice when I was watching it growing up. But you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It came out in '92. I mm-hmm. was only seven. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, all these times I watched it, I never thought about this until I was I was listening to something and they was talking about Boomerang, and they were saying that what they did, what Eddie Murphy did, was he flipped it, and like what it was. Robin Givens was like the quote unquote man. She was the one that was cool with, you know, having sex and there's no screen, no strings attached and all this he type the one shit. Who fell in love. Yeah, and he the one who fell in love, and it yeah. was just like, you know, and he was the one that was heartbroken. And like somebody, I can't remember who it was, but like I had got a whole new different respect mm-hmm. for Boomerang, and like, and just for him to to come out with. With a, a with a romantic comedy, and to have, I mean, Tisha Campbell was the neighbor, dude. She yeah. was fucking hilarious and shit. You got yeah. Martin, David, Allen Greer, John yep. Witherspoon, yep. and it's just like for him to be able to to bring in like these people that he brought in. Like Eddie Murphy is the is the one guy is that when <clears> you <throat> really go back and you look at his career, yeah, like he. Not only did he put a lot of people on, it's one of those facts where he was like, yo, you can come and take some of my light. You can dim some of my light to lighten yourself up. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing that that I'm really appreciative of because, like, we probably wouldn't get some of these people. Like, even though, like, Martin was on um, 
Because I think House Party did come first, but I think House Party was his first movie. Yeah. But, like, you know, everything was about kid and play. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, now don't get me wrong, Martin didn't. He was he was he was nice in it. Now yeah. he 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 made his mark. But mm-hmm. like at the end of the day, kid and play was like yeah, they was forget, the focal point. Yeah, they forget how big they was. Like those two uh, dudes, kid and play had a whole cartoon, bro. You know what I'm saying? They and they had, had a, a whole, Saturday morning cartoon, bro. Yeah, and so like, and for him to be able to, to bring Martin because he brought Martin in. You know what I'm saying? Boomerang. He brought Martin in. Um. Martin I mean, was hot he, though. He 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 was he was starting to flame. Like, yeah. like they put it this way: house party. You know what I'm saying? You know the whole saying: when there's smoke, there's fire. There was smoke mm-hmm. at the time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was smoke. And then like he was, all he his was Def doing Comedy Martin Jam at, shit. He was doing Martin and Def Comedy Jam at the time, wasn't he? Yeah, because mm-hmm. I think Martin. Oh, shit, let me see. Because Boomerang came out in '92. I think I think Def Comedy Jam was first. Then he did Martin. Then he was. Then he did Boomerang. Well, he had to be in the middle of Martin because yeah, cause Martin went on. Yeah, because he was still so, filming. Yeah, but yeah, and the, but the point the point I'm making is just like man, this dude he he was bringing people on and was like yo like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying you do this I'm I'm not sure he said this but like you do this dude I'm gonna uplift your career and that mm-hmm. shit was dope and then I also forgot that uh Eddie Murphy. Was in dangerous video too. Yep. So it's just like ah man, this dude man, so dope man. But so I mean dope. that just that just goes to show you know what I'm saying like that that goes to show you what I mean when I say that he was at that rock star level like when he was doing his stand up like he was already at that level he was already that guy so to see him in those Michael Jackson videos and to see that he's cool with Michael Jackson, to see that he was cool with Richard Pryor, you know what I'm saying? Like to see that he was cool with all of the people that he was cool with. Like, don't forget, like he was on Saturday night live Mm -hmm. and he was pulling David Allen Greer and them in and they was on in living color and they was going at it at the time. And, 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 and and, and we're not, and and I'm going to tell you something else we fucked up on. He was the first black cast member. Yeah, on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah, you know I'm saying we got to point that out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so you know what I'm saying, like, because remember they was trying to get Richard Pryor to do that, and Richard Pryor was like he wasn't fucking with him. So the fact that Eddie went and took it, and Eddie took it to a whole nother level. He brought Buckwheat. He bought you know what I'm saying the Stevie Wonder character on. Like he really gave Saturday Night Live like that that edge. You know what I'm saying? Like that's another joke that you can go back to. Where he'd be like, "Hey man." Ain't you the dude that be doing Stevie Wonder? He be like, don't let me ever see you do that shit again, motherfucker. I don't never see you want to disrespect it. Uh, I don't never want to see you disrespect it, Eddie, uh, Stevie Wonder again. Stevie Wonder is a musical genius. That's my shit, bro. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, I can caught this shit all day, bro. This is my nigga. So, like, when I tell you, man, like, not only because you bring up Boomerang, and Boomerang is a perfect example, right? Like, when you look at Boomerang, like you said, he was pulling in all of these people, you know what I'm saying? And then not to mention that, you know what I'm saying, he had Earth the Kitten Boomerang. He had Iman in Boomerang. She was the biggest, you know what I'm saying, one of the biggest uh, models out. And so, you know what I'm saying, like he getting all of these people and bringing them all in. But the one thing that a lot of people that they really didn't even focus on as well because they were so caught up in how good the movie was. And don't forget Halle Berry. How could I forget Halle Berry? Um, I but a lot of people right. forget that, you know what I'm saying, that everybody in the fucking movie was successful. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They was running a, a top modeling agency. They was running a top marketing business. Like this, you know what I'm saying? They wasn't like just random ass street rats. These motherfuckers was at the top of their game. Like, remember, they was going to parties and tuxedos and suits. You know what I'm saying? They was meeting up at each other. Like, remember his um remember what his apartment looked like. His apartment was fly as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like him and Halle Berry was sitting on, on the uh couch, they sitting there watching the damn uh, game, the Lakers that. game. Oh, oh, you talking about? Oh, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know what I'm saying? You you get a chance to see, you know what I'm saying? Once again, you get a chance to see black people in a dope light to where, you know, you got young, successful black people. You got older, successful black people in these spaces where usually when, when they put us in movies or we get to make movies, we don't get to see ourselves in that light. So that's, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's starting to, it starts to become a theme in his movies. Like, when you watch 
any Eddie Murphy movie, it becomes a theme in this movie to where you always going to see, you know what I'm saying, black people in a good light. It's never going to be in <clears throat> something goofy. Well, and I ain't going to say goofy because he's a comedian, but it'll never be something negative. Like, even, even with Norbert, like, if you watch Norbert, even though a lot of people say Norbert is one of his best movies, I don't tend to think so. But even in Norbert, like, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't one of them movies to where – you was like, man, I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they wasn't selling drugs. They wasn't drinking on the corner. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't in the streets gang banging. Mm-hmm. They wasn't, you know what I'm saying, poor or nothing like that. These was like middle class black people. And it was like, you know what I'm saying? It was a dude who was with a chick who she, well, I guess Rasputia ran the business. I don't know what she really did. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get through that one. But it was still a, you know what I'm saying? It was still a decent movie for what it was. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, he took over Nutty Professor. You know what I'm saying? If anybody know anything about the Nutty Professor, um, it was done twice. Before it was done. No, yeah, it was done twice. So they had the original Nutty Professor that was in black and white. And then they had another one that had um, Robin Williams in it. And then he took it and changed it into something different and made it our, like a story for us. And he basically made, you know what I'm saying, Nutty Professor and had Sherman Clump in that motherfucker and Buddy Love. And you talking about hilarious. That was one of Dave Chappelle's, you know what I'm saying, first times getting some spotlight. Mm-hmm. He put Dave Chappelle on. You know what I'm saying? He gave Dave Chappelle some love. So like I said, like he all you like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We've been saying this whole time, like, bro, he's always giving people they shine. He's always giving people their roses. He's always making sure he opening up the door for other people. And that's why, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's appropriate to make an episode like this for somebody like him. Yes, sir, man. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Vampires, <clears throat> Vampires in Brooklyn was a good one, man. <laughs> uh, a lot of people seem to forget about it, man. It was so funny what? when my man, what's my man name that was in, um, um, Kadeem Hardison. He the one that was in the, uh, not, not the Cosby show, but different world. Mm-hmm. Man, listen, boy, when his body parts kept falling off, oh that motherfucker kept falling apart. He was a zombie. Yo, but that <laughs> shit was hilarious, bro. Got the I, me. That's my shit, bro. Hey, that joke is so funny. <laughs> but, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be real with you. I never was huge in any of the other professors. I mean, hey, they man, had their moments. They I had their moments, but I feel you. you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, to me, I mean, this is just my opinion. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? 96, Nether Professor, Metro in 97. He mm-hmm. did a voiceover for Mulan in 98. And then he, he did Dr. Doolittle in 98. And did Holy Man in 98. And I was like, yo. Holy Man was it was all right, though. <laughs> Holy Man know, was that, that was that, hey, that, that's what, Listen, <laughs> go back and watch that shit now, bro. I'm telling you, bro. That shit was funny as fuck, bro. Go back and watch that shit now. You're going to be like, what the fuck? I'm telling you, bro. Yo, it was kind of like, all right, man. You know, Eddie. Eddie ain't Eddie. And then... Well, he, he, I think... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that what turned it around was life. Okay. So what I think is, you know what I'm saying, like he had these um he had he started getting into that that role where he was really starting to become the man, right? And he started leaning into more of the family movies. Like I said, you you know what I'm saying, going if you check his track record, he always anytime it was his production or anytime he had the power to be an executive producer or whatever, you know what I'm saying? He always made sure that it it had at least some type of positive message in in it. And so I think him going into the Nutty Professor, him going into Mulan was that lane of him going into, you know what I'm saying, that family movie role because Mm -hmm. later on down the line, we're going to see that motherfucker paid off. So, you know what I'm saying? Like like you said, Mulan, Dr. Doolittle. Um, I thought the first Dr. Doolittle was good. And then Holy Man was his way out of that um it was his way out of that family lane to get back into you know what I'm saying the the old Eddie Murphy lane like the 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 raunchy lane mm-hmm. and so i think that's why what i think that's why holy man is so funny to me because you could kind of see where he's trying to get that groove back to get back into, you know what I'm saying, those Harlem Nights, those coming to Americas, you know what I'm saying, all of those, you know what I'm saying, the um, 
boomerangs and stuff like that. So then, you know, so like you said, we we bring life up into the picture. One of the funniest movies of all time. Oh my god, man! Listen, you talk about quotables. If 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 if, if anybody on planet Earth had the most quotables, bro, it has to be Eddie Murphy. Hey, bro. Listen, listen, it has listen. to be, bro. <laughs> Dude, I got, I got, a, I got a full one for you. Yo, when these motherfuckers was laying in the bed, and Eddie Murphy was looking at mine. He said, "He said, man, what the, he said, what the fuck you doing, right?" He said, "He said, it's time to sit here. What have you got to do, sleep?" He's like, man, <laughs> man, he said, man, he said, uh, he said, he said something. He was like, man, he said, I got something brewing. I got something brewing. And he was like, man, he said. He said, "I'm the one which you gotta be sleeve." He said, "He said, he said, I got some. He said, I got some, bro. I got ass with bro." He said, "Okay." He said, "Whatever it is, whatever it is." He was like, and then he said, "No, the funniest part." But he said, "Hope your ass will piss the bed with that weak ass bladder." He said, and if I do, and if I do, I'm gonna put the sheets on you. <laughs> hey man, that was hey. bro. Yo, but hey, that shit is so man. Like that life is so fuck, fucking no. Funny, let me dude. tell you. That ain't the funniest part of life. The funniest part of life, bro, it's this one. It's this one scene in life where it was supposed to be Martin Lawrence's moment, right? So Martin Lawrence is these. That's when this is when they like real, real old, and they taking care of the uh, warden or whatever. And so Martin Lawrence all dressed up and shit, and he's standing by the car. So <laughs> Eddie Murphy come around the corner, you know what I'm saying? He cutting the, <laughs> the bushes and shit. And that motherfucker look up and he see Martin Lawrence. He said, <laughs> he said, uh, uh, Claude, what the hell are you doing? He said, oh, Ray, he said, we going out for a day on the town. He was like, don't I look good? He said, nigga, you like a butler. And he was like, no, he was like, nigga, you know what I'm saying? We look good. He was like, now listen. He said, I don't want to hear all that. He said, I'm about to go drive. He said, nigga, you can't drive. He said, he don't know yet. He said, I'm about to go drive. He said, I'll be right back. Don't touch this car. He walked up. He was like, don't do what? He said, don't touch this car. He walked up on that motherfucker. He said, don't touch this car. He said, if you touch it, he said, I'm going to have to whoop your ass. He said, you ain't going to whoop nobody ass. He said, I do what I want to in this motherfucker car. He said, if I want to, I whip my dick out and piss on it. I piss all over the motherfucker. He said, now why you got to be so nasty, right? He said, because I'm a nasty, nasty motherfucker. Nasty motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, hey. listen, bro. Hey, you talking about it? you talking about a hilarious movie, bro? And the and the best part about this movie, though, this movie is really about the prison, co- you know what I'm saying? Like the prison industrial complex, about oh, how yeah. you know what I'm saying people are getting wronged and put into these life sentences, and they didn't even do shit. But just the fact that they put a comedy element to it. And you know what I'm saying brought that shit to light. It man, that was one of the funniest movies of you all know, time, bro. And, and you know that this is the, <clears throat> this is what makes life so brilliant, right? Is the fact of it's really a dark, sad yeah, movie. It really is. It really is. Like motherfuckers really, and and you don't get it until you're older. I mean, this came out in uh, ninety nine. So I'm, yeah. you know, what I'm saying I'm about to enter high school. So I'm just, I'm just hearing all the jokes. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not even. It didn't hit me until I was a full grown adult. Where it's like, yo, like this movie is really bad. Like it's really a bad. Like these dudes spent their whole life in jail for a crime they didn't do. Yeah. And and then like, and it just shows you, like it shows you racism. It mm-hmm. shows you, you know what I'm saying? How fucked up the Thirteenth Amendment is. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it just shows you like all these other things, but like. But the comedic stuff is so funny. It it is, it's the secondary story. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? About like how fucked up the movie really is, and right. then, and then even even how Ray and Claude even got together. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Ray pickpocked him, <laughs> and he don't have the money to pay Spank. You know what I'm saying? Which is Rick James. You know what I'm saying? And so they and so then they send these motherfuckers down, you know what I'm saying, to get this uh cause they was bootleggers. Mm-hmm. And then they end up like it, it's dude, it is like the the movie and, and that's another thing has a great storyline about like how many times they tried to break out and all this type stuff. Like, but it, it mm-hmm. is like I felt like that movie was the was the one 
like the the come out with both both finger necks. Like, Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you get there, before you get there, don't forget, bro. This nigga had Bernie Mac, Anthony Anderson. He still he he brought back Guy Tory. Like you said, he had he had his old friend Rick James, um, Charlie Murphy's greatest enemy. He had uh, uh Bokeem Woodbine. Yep, Bokeem Woodbine was in it. I forgot what the dark skin name is. The one to beat him up over the cornbread, but he was yeah, the man. Uh, the time. Uh, uh, Jawana Man was in it again. Jawana Man was in. I forgot. Uh, I uh, forgot what the older dude name was. The one that was in the wheelchair, but he was in the hey, movie called Miss Everest Boys. Hey, your uh, boy, your, your boy from uh, your boy from uh, Snowfall. Looked over the gun line, boss. The gun line, boss. Wait a minute. Who did he, he play? About the gun line, boss. He Who played he the gun play line. Snowfall and Snowfall. Irene, ex-husband. Damn, he sure did. Now that you... <laughs> I forgot all about this shit. Hell nah. Well, see, that's how much I dislike her. That's funny hey, as fuck that you said. It was that so thing, funny because he was like, he said he was telling the story. He was like, he said, "Where was I?" He said, "The gun line, about." He said, "Huh?" <laughs> <laughs> he said, "The gun line, about." He said, "He said the gun line, about." He said, the gun line, about. He said, huh? Man. Girl, I'm out. He said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny, but it's so many I'm trying to moments. think who the fuck else is in this movie, bro. Uh, who else is all in there? Um, shit, man. I think uh, that's really it. No, Sanaa Sana Latham. She was Yep, uh, Sanaa Latham was in it. Yep, she was in it. Um, um. Uh, shit, man. The one girl that was the... Uh, that was the hooker lady. Like she had a little run. I forget what. Her oh name yeah, was. yeah, yeah. Where uh, where he juiced him out his money. Yeah, but like man, th- but that's another thing, man. But like he, Bowfinger, man, I can't let you skip over Bowfinger. That's another yeah, one man. of his secret classics, bro. It's a secret. When that, yeah. when that nigga had them glasses on with the braces, and that nigga said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, <laughs> man, that shit was funny as fuck. <laughs> <coughs> man, you got to stop. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I, my mama bought me that movie on, on uh, from Blockbuster. <laughs> bro, when I tell you I was in the house crying when that nigga did that shit, that nigga said, <laughs> bro, I was on the floor rolling. <laughs> I just watched that shit Two weeks ago, bro. That's how funny that fucking movie. Steve Martin is a fucking <laughs> fool in that movie, bro. But you talking about comedy, bro. That shit is funny as fuck. Bowfinger was a good movie, bro. Man, listen. But two thousand one have... is two thousand one is yeah. gone, bro. Two thousand one yeah, is yeah. where because you can like, this other shit. Like I said, I wasn't huge in the Nether Professors, man. The clubs. Yeah. Now you got to give them a shout out for doing. You know, what I'm saying thirty episodes of the PJs. Oh but, come on, um, what and creating it? Yeah, but. <clears throat> my guy, Trek. Man, what? Listen, boy. I dread Don- that movie. But Donkey was so fucking funny, dude. <laughs> my little <laughs> sister, my little sister used to literally watch that movie all day long, from sun up to sundown. Now, listen, she was only born in 1998. So in 2001, she's like two, three years old. So she ain't got no school. Bro, this is all she's watching. She literally watched this movie so much that she can, to this day, quote that movie from front to back. Man, listen. This dude, this dude got a whole song. Man, what? Dude, from, from damn, from damn uh, Shrek. Like, the thing is, this was supposed to be... <laughs> Mike Myers like comeback because you know what I'm yeah. saying really because really after Wayne's World like he was really I mean like no. don't get me wrong no 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 he had no, what's no, the no. name he had what's Austin the name Powers. Um, Austin Powers he had Austin yeah. Powers so I think that Shrek was supposed to have been like his like thing mm-hmm. I don't think he I think that if he knew now don't get me wrong Mike Myers is still cashing these checks don't get mm-hmm. me wrong but mm-hmm. I don't think he really expected to get it outshined by Eddie Murphy being a donkey. Man, listen, if it wasn't for Eddie Murphy, this motherfucking movie wouldn't did shit. 
Man, Eddie Murphy see. made this movie exactly what it is, bro. It's it's one it's one of those animated classics where it's like, I mean, nah, I ain't gonna put it up there. I was about to fuck up. I mean, some people may put it up there, dude. To me, Lion King is the to me is animated god to me. Like I like to me that was that was the one movie. That I don't care how old I am. It's like, yo, I'm watching the watch original Lion King. Like, yeah, I ain't gonna like, lie to you, man. I'm a big Jungle Book fan. Jungle Book was cool. I ain't Jungle gonna lie, Book like was my shit. Jungle Book, I want to be that, like you. That was my shit. And then, and, and then, like the other thing that was for me, because like, see, I mean, I know you into a lot of shit. Like, I know you was telling me about that that the animated thing you watching now. Uh, that's like mm-hmm. the you so you said like the animated version of Boys. But oh, like I was, yeah. like I'm not like the hugest animated person. Like the only thing that I can say that I watch, um, and the only reason I do it is because it's just like one of those childhood things that I can't let go. Like I still be watching Gargoyles on uh. I mean, on that's Disney just a Plus. classic. Yeah, that ain't that's yeah. just a classic. That's ain't just a classic. You can do about that. That's a classic. But, but then like like uh Spider Man into the Spider Verse, like that shit, like I that was shit was fire. Man, I still watch. I still watch uh, Batman animated series too. That was that was not for kids. Yeah, yeah, but I, I break. <laughs> it was it's not. They was killing <laughs> niggas on that shit. <laughs> that shit was crazy. But, but yeah, I bring that up to be like, dude, like Shrek. Shrek is up there. Shrek is one of yeah. those ones where it's like, yo, like it's like, yeah, I'm not a kid, but this shit got some got some funny bars in it. What when them like, niggas it, went to Duloc? Hey, bro, <laughs> them niggas bent over. They said they wanted to see art, and then turned back around. and was like, dude, like kids, dude. I'm like, bro, they literally just mooned little kids in this goddamn cartoon, bro. That show was crazy. <laughs> but then, like, a rest of the shit, man, that's coming up. Like, you know, what I'm saying all the Shrek. So he had a lot of shit to come off the Shrek. Shit. Hey, man, don't skip over come Showtime, on. man. Showtime was good too. Man, get Showtime. The fuck out <laughs> Showtime of this, was man. all right, man. They get that shit out of here, man. You know what's next. To Pluto me. Nash. Like, I, Pluto Nash. Come shit. on, man. man. That was a good look, one. That was that was that that was that time where it was just like. I mean, listen, I had a lot going on in my life at this time. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, uh, Pluto Nash. I was on, Pluto Nash was all right. You gotta man, go back and watch Pluto Nash. It got Rosario Dawson in it. Man, listen, I was I was balling. I was working. <laughs> I wasn't doing too much at that time. I wasn't really worried about Eddie. But yo, yeah. Um, this, is the, this is the this is the only movie, my guy. The Hundred Mansion. I, nah, fuck that too. No, man, man, no. Nah. Damn, man. Listen, we got to go all the way to two thousand six, my guy. Oh man, man, yo. And then this was to me. This was the because it, you can look at his his uh. His lineup, and it's a lot of family movies. You know what I'm saying? Like he, Bro, this he went this, into it heavy. This 2006 and 2007, this nigga had three yo, straight, bro. Yo, listen to this me. nigga had three straight. Man, when when he did Dream Girls, yeah, you know I'm saying Jimmy early. But Jimmy got soul. Someone said, "I," he said, "I meant you." No, he said, "I never meant to make you." Cry. <laughs> <laughs> so hey. Hey. Niggas forgot, niggas forgot Eddie could sing, man. Like, like, sing, sing, like, like, yeah, seriously, like, this, this shit, like, dude, man, this is really, I've never been huge in the musicals, man. This is like the only musical that I could sit there and just like continuously watch this shit, like, what motherfuckers is like, yo, like, Dream Girls is like for girls, I don't give a fuck, like, this shit is good. Yeah, nah, I can't, I can't continuously man. watch it, but man, I will listen. say this when it came out, I watched it. And I told my mom, I said, I don't know what's going to happen in this movie. I said, but if Jennifer Hudson and Beyonce got to sing on the same scene, hey. I'm telling you, it's rap. <laughs> it's a fucking Listen, rap. I'm going to tell you something. Dude, Beyonce took a... She, I got to give her some credit for this. Mm-hmm. Because she actually took a back seat on two things. And it was surprising that she didn't. Well, I would look, we don't know if she had issues with this, but like they said it in like two scenes that she didn't have shit on Jennifer Hudson. 
Well, it was saying that, like, the one time when, like, they, when they appointed her as the lead singer, and they were saying mm-hmm. that, you know, Jennifer was the one that was the lead singer, and they was like, well, they basically gave her the, you know, she got the body, she got the look. All well, she was Beyonce, things. too. Yeah, but, like, even Beyonce <clears throat> said, she has the stronger voice. You know yeah, what I'm but saying? they were smart to do what they did because she was Beyonce. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, like Jennifer Hudson then, at the time couldn't carry no movie, bro. But do, she won a, a Oscar for her first movie. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. You got to remember. Okay, so listen, this is this is the thing that I always got to remind people. You got to remember where Jennifer Hudson was at. Jennifer Hudson was just coming off of American Idol, so she didn't have the same American Idol. Exactly. So she didn't even have the same fan base that Beyonce no. had. What no. drew people to the movie was Beyonce, remember? That's what I'm yeah. saying. You got to remember she was Beyonce. Now, in the performances, you got that. No, she, that's right. what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. I'm, I'm, no, I'm meaning like in the script. Yeah. What they? No, I'm talking about the script. I'm not. Yeah, oh, I thought you were talking about Beyonce. like behind the scenes. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm saying like. Even okay, right. So what I meant was for her to for them to put it in the script for Beyonce to say, "Oh yeah, to be girl, like, oh yeah, she sang, to, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 she sings better than me." And then another one was when when Jamie Foxx was talking to her and mm-hmm. saying, "Like the reason I chose you was basically because you didn't have the best voice. It was mm-hmm. just that I can use I can, I can use like you." to basically get us to where we need to go, but like mm-hmm. it's not because of your talent type of thing. Because well, she had, she took three L's. The third one was when they both had their solo songs. Man, listen. Hey. Man, when man, when when Jennifer Hudson did that joint, yo, that that is but that then, shit became her song, even, bro. And then no, she took another L. I'm gonna tell you another L she took. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, she took another one. She took another one. At the end, the Dream Girl song, because remember they did a Dream Girl song mm-hmm. that was uh that was led by Beyonce. Yeah. But then they did another one that was led by Jennifer. Like, mm-hmm. boy, Jennifer killed Murdered that shit at the end. But boy, they, all, like, they both took an L when Eddie Murphy got on that goddamn stage and started singing Jimmy Got Soul. No, he didn't. Know that. Jimmy Got Soul was the song, but <laughs> hey, Listen, he, said, he said, man, I can't sing no more sad songs. Come on, man. Said, Jimmy Got Soul, <laughs> goddamn. Jimmy didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the head. <laughs> Hey boy, hey, and Jimmy started rapping, but that job was so, hey, but that job you was hilarious. No games, man. man. Jimmy so, Early so stupid. So leading off from 2006, man, we go into 2007, and he come out with Norbit. Norbit ends up being the hit. Um, like I said, man, everybody loved it, but I wasn't a big fan of Norbit. Mm-hmm. Then later that year, he come out with Shrek the Third, another hit. You know what I'm saying? Of course, the kids gonna run to that. Um, and then uh, let me see, he came out with Meet Dave. Imagine that he went back into his family bag. Um, 2010, he banged one, another one out with Shrek Forever After. Um, he do a whole bunch of uh, Shrek joints. Then one of my one of one of the movies that I think is probably some of the funniest shit I've ever seen in Tower Heist. That shit was funny as fuck. Um, he did a hell of a job in that movie where they were trying to steal that motherfucking car out the uh out that motherfucking <laughs> tower. But that shit was funny as fuck, bro. Um. Tower Heist, a thousand words. You know what I'm saying? He was dipping in and out of that bag. Um, let me see. Mr. Church came out. Now, Mr. Church was good. Now I didn't see Mr. Church. I heard good I things did. about it though. It is it's really good, man. It was one of those, you know what I'm saying, one of those heartfelt films where like he was um what was he, man? He he ended up like caretaking for this little girl and then mm-hmm. like they ended up having like a relationship when uh not a relationship i mean like a not relationship like they together mm-hmm. but like he like took care of this girl and you know up into her adulthood or whatever yeah. whatnot but like dude it it is a really really good movie and like i had to because eddie murphy at that time 
like I was just stuck on his classics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I wasn't watching any of his recent stuff. Like the only right. thing recent that I was watching was life. It was just like to me, yeah, that's, it that's was like he kind of kinda, yeah, it was like he kind of fell off a little bit. Like, you know, I'm not really like into his shit. And so mm-hmm. then I seen Mr. Church, and I was like, man, I was like, Eddie ain't got it no more. And then like I watched it, and, and the thing is, like Eddie still Eddie, like you know what I'm saying? He exactly. would say some stuff where it's, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's it's just funny because it's him. Yeah. But like he's not a comedian in this movie, like he is an actor right. in this movie. And right. like, and then like fuck it. If you want to watch, you'll watch it. He dies. And like you feel his character, like you know what I'm saying? But Damn, he died scared. in the movie. Yeah, yeah. That's well, he, he got old. He got old. Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Because like it shows him like taking care of the girl when she was a kid. And then mm-hmm. like something happened and like she came back. It, it was some kind of shit. So she was grown. So obviously he aged like 15 years or whatever the case may be. But Mr. Church was good, man. Mr. Church was real good. Okay. And then 2019, man, we get probably another classic from Eddie, man, that Hold a up, lot though. of people. Before, before you get there. Yeah. Eddie had left the scene for a minute. Three years. But when he came back with what what made me knew, know something was coming was, I don't know if you ever watched it, but did you ever watch that Seinfeld joint where he would have a comedian and comedian a coffee? Comedian and cars. Yeah, comedian cars. Yeah, of course. Of course. When he did that, I was like, yo, Eddie got something coming. Because mm-hmm. like, I was just like, he, I'm pretty sure him and Seinfeld, they, they probably cool. I oh, would for imagine. sure, for sure. And I was just like, I don't think Eddie would do that if he didn't have nothing on the horizon. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, like with with comedians, man. You know, that's like a uh, that's like a fraternity. That's like a brotherhood type thing. Like, that's one of those things that, like, when you get to certain levels in comedy, like you, you know, what I'm saying, you get around those those guys like Seinfeld, Eddie Murphy. You know what I'm saying? Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer. You know what I'm saying? Like you get around those guys, Tracy Morgan. Um, you really get around like those dudes who've been doing it for a long time and really got that, you know what I'm saying? Like and really done had that stardom and then been in those uh scenarios where they've been the man before. So it was only right for somebody like Eddie to come out and do this movie. 2019, he does a comeback movie with Dolomite is my name. Now this was to me, this was that old Eddie. This was this was Eddie that you know what I'm saying. He was he brought himself back with Dolomite is my name. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's the bio story of well, it's the story of how Rudy Ray Moore created the Dolomite character, did the Dolomite movie, basically got the movie played when nobody else wanted to show him love. He basically was an independent filmmaker. Um and he, he you know what I'm saying, he put the movie Dolomite together. Um Rudy Ray Moore also did Petey Wee Straw, the Devil's Son in Law. I mean, black exploitation films which saved Hollywood. Um, this was one of them. So when Dolomite came out now, this is the funniest shit about this whole movie. When you watch Dolomite is my name, go back and watch Dolomite afterwards, just so you can see the movie actually put together in like in, in action, bro, that karate scene that that nigga was doing when he was like, man, you don't know karate <laughs> <laughs> on the real Dolomite. This nigga don't know karate, bro. <laughs> this nigga had it. this nigga did a chest kick, and you know, like when you chest kick somebody, they fly back. This nigga did a chest kick. This nigga flew diagonal to the side, bro. I was like, yo, what the <laughs> fuck is going on, bro? But it's like you know, what I'm saying those one of the movies that you can go back and watch and laugh at, bro, because you know, like it's a comedy movie, but at the same time, you know, what I'm saying Dolomite is sticking it to the man, so. You know what I'm saying? He came back with Dolomite is my name, and then 2020 was supposed to be um, the resurgence of Coming to America 2, but got pushed back to this year, and then Coming to America 2 came out this year, which is uh, the last production he had um, so far. And um, I ain't going to lie to you, man. I went in with no expectations. I knew it wasn't going to be funnier than the first one, and I actually enjoyed it. It um, It was funny as hell to me. 
uh, my favorite scene in uh, Coming to America 2 is <laughs> is the funeral scene when James Earl Jones is, is in the coffin and they got, you know what I'm saying, like all the festivities and shit is going on. And they when they first saw him, he got his eyes closed and he's just sitting there. So it looked like he did. And then they go back and show him again, and that nigga lift one eye up. Bro, that shit made me fall out my seat, bro. I said, yo, this nigga is alive at his funeral. That was the funniest fucking thing to me, bro. I don't know why it made me laugh so hard, but that shit was just funny as hell to me. But it was a great movie, man. It was a um it was a it was a great movie. I was uh I was impressed by what they did with that uh second one. I mean, I was too, man. Like, and and I think what people had to understand about it was the fact of it's not 1988 anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like some of the same jokes can't fly. Um, I thought the things that they did bring back, I thought <laughs> they picked the right ones. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad that, you know what I'm saying? That Because one of the dope things that he did do in that was some people would say that you know, it was a PC role to mm-hmm. to have his daughter take over mm-hmm. and all the type stuff. But what was dope was he showed his flaws where yeah. he's never seen this kid before right. and he's going to make him the king of Zamunda. You know what I'm saying? The prince mm-hmm. of Zamunda and it's like, yo, like, just because he's a man, like, you got you got to teach him to be royal. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and for them to, to show him fucking up and then he makes that transition of being, you know what I'm saying, the father that he needs to be because right. I thought that was dope, man. Some people probably was like, yo, that's just like how people was upset about that one scene in um in Endgame where all the oh, girls the women came together. Yeah. yeah I ain't gonna lie, like, I got mad too because really in that scene, that movie could have ended right there. <laughs> Captain Marvel people- Captain Marvel and Scarlet Witch would have dusted that nigga up, but we ain't gonna go yeah. there though. I'm just telling you, that they'd have yeah. dusted that nigga up. When he headbutt Captain Marvel and looked back, yeah, he was like, oh shit, that bitch is for real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they'd have dusted his ass up, but whatever, man. I understand why they did it. But yeah, I, I mean, for me, I felt like it was a dope scene because, you know what I'm saying, like my daughter got the got a chance to see, you know what I'm saying, like the, the female superheroes getting busy and actually getting to it. And, you know what I'm saying, it was, you know, it, it's dope to be able f- for her to see, you know what I'm saying, like a Captain Marvel, Black Widow, um, you know what I'm saying, Scarlet Witch and shit like that. And, and she don't have to worry about seeing just Iron Man and Thor and the Hulk and shit like that. So that was dope, man. Anybody else didn't like it, uh, like my man Richard Price said, they can suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> but you know man you know Eddie Murphy man like he, he also got he got 32 credits on soundtracks but the thing is he got 17 writing credits Yeah, and he pulled a power move mm-hmm. right he wasn't originally cast for 48 hours right he wanted to put a power move and he's one of the writers on another 48 hours mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's like mm-hmm. yo it, it got to the point where, because like at the time, Nick Nolte was a, you know what I'm saying? You know, he was the man. He was, yeah, he was the man. He was and it the did, man. And then Nick Nolte come back around, like they did, they did that with, I think, 82. And mm-hmm. then uh, another 48 hours came out in 90. And it's like the roles flipped. Like, yeah. Eddie's the man. <laughs> Eddie's yeah. the man now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I thought that was so dope, man, to, uh, to pull that power move to, mm-hmm. uh, be, to be a writer. On um another forty eight hours, so yeah. that was dope. And like, man, just to, and then like, you know, when they brought the uh boomerang to a, a TV series. Oh, wrote, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that. I forgot. Uh, Chris Rock was in Boomerang too. I think he was like the male dude. Yes, yeah, he was like the male that. dude. He was yeah. the male dude because yeah. he did the one thing. He was like, hold up. He said, "Man, you didn't read my mail." He mm-hmm. said, "Hold this up." He looked at it. He was like, he said, man, I told you, man. He was like, man, when are you going to hire me, man? Because <laughs> like, he was a damn tip, man. Yeah. He went, he went and hired him. But, um, but, yeah, man, like, boom, like it was dope that, uh, like, Eddie Murphy is one of those dudes, man. It's just like, he, like you said, he, he set the blueprint for people. And yeah. he showed a lot of people ownership. You know, mm-hmm. like, I don't think, like, he's one of those dudes where it's like, 
he 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 watched the destruction of his mentor in mm -hmm. in Richard Pryor, and we all know what Richard Pryor could have been, man. Um, and like Richard Pryor missed out on on a lot of shit simply because like motherfuckers couldn't they, they couldn't count on him showing up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then it's like okay, I see what he fucked up, and so I'm gonna elevate. I'm gonna take it to a new level. And it's mm -hmm. like, and then when somebody like Kevin Hart look at it, like the whole foundation, like, you know what I'm saying? He put it like this. Eddie Murphy put down, you know what I'm saying? He dug the hole. No, okay. Richard Pryor dug the hole. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Eddie Murphy put down the cement. He put up the walls. He put up all that shit. And then, and then um, Kevin, he put the roof on the place. You know what I'm saying? Because like Kevin took it to a whole nother hey, thing. He he did more than well. Well, you you can't do that. See, this is this is the way I look at it, right? So Red Fox was the one who dug the hole because niggas don't know about Red Fox stand up. That nigga, the king of the party records. And that nigga, you talking about a, a, a comedian? Red Fox, go go research Red Fox if you never listened to him, or if you never just heard any of his comedy. Red Fox was the man. Um, so Red Fox dug the hole, you know what I'm saying? He got the plot of land, and then I felt like, um, I felt like Bill Cosby and Richard Pryor kind of built the foundation, you know what I'm saying? Because they was both kind of on the same level until, you know, what I'm saying Richard had that situation, um, and then you know what I'm saying you you got to then go to guys like Keenan Ivory Wayne's, um, Martin, uh, Chris Rock, you know what I'm saying? Um, guys like Tracy Morgan, you know what I'm saying? Like those guys, you know what I'm saying? Who, you know what I'm saying? Made sure they built the shell of it. So, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Excuse me, the framework, roofing and everything else. And then, you know what I'm saying? You get, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, uh, the guys like Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac, you know what I'm saying? The Kings of Comedy, everybody in that era, they kind of, you know what I'm saying, furnished it. And then, uh, you know what I'm saying, Kevin Hart just kind of came in. Him, um, uh, who else am I thinking of? Cat Williams, you know what I'm saying? Mike Epps, all them. They tore that motherfucker down and built the mansion on top of it. You feel me? With everything that they learned from that previous house, they just tore it down and just rebuilt a huge-ass mansion. And so, and then Kevin, he not only built the mansion, he basically furnished that motherfucker too. Cause that nigga, man, listen, he got a team with him, and everybody on his team is eating. When I say eating, two of his homies is writers. Um, two of them is stand up. Well, three of them are stand ups. Two of them is writers. One of them manage everything. You know what I'm saying? He got a dude that's a barber that do everything. He got a dude that's a fitness coach that do a whole bunch of shit. So it's like he really put his team in position to really do it. And you could tell he learned a lot of that from Eddie because Eddie did the same shit. Like, look at what he did for Charlie. Charlie Murphy was on the road doing this thing for a minute. You know what I'm saying? He was in movies and everything else. Um, you know what I'm saying? So to see that, you know what I'm saying? He put Chris Rock out there. He put Kevin Hart out there. He put, um, well, not put Kevin Hart out there, but you know what I'm saying? He kind of guided Kevin Hart. Um, you know what I'm saying? Martin and, you know what I'm saying? David Allen Greer, Tommy Davidson, all these guys, you know what I'm saying? He basically was, was that one that opened the door and held it open so they all could get through, man. And, and it just go to show you, if you look at his lineage, I'm sure that every last one of these successful dudes, bro, somehow, some way been connected to Eddie in some shape, form, or fashion. Yep. I couldn't, I couldn't have said it any better. And the only thing that I meant, like, the one person, like, the point that I was trying to make was, like, when it came to, like, Ownership type of shit, and the person yeah, that yeah, I yeah. did get was Keenan 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 Ivory Wayne. Yeah. He's the one that I fucked up on that one, like yeah. he because he like what he was able to do for <clears throat> for a living color, and it was so dope. I saw a tweet, and it could have been an old tweet, but somebody posted it the other day. It was Jim Carrey, mm -hmm. and Jim Carrey was like, you know, it was a picture of when a living color must have won something or I don't know if it was like a reunion or something like that. It mm -hmm. had to be a reunion because he was older. 
And he was saying that he has nothing but gratitude for like, you know what I'm saying, for his black audience. Because he was mm-hmm. like, if it wasn't for Keenan Ivan Wayne, he's like, nobody would even know who Jim Carrey is. That's the same like, way Robert Williams was. And he was like, if y'all, he was like, if y'all didn't get like they basically what it was, because he was he was he was putting out a post like basically for black people. And right. Saying like, yo, y'all took me in before anybody else did. He was like, mm. because he's from Canada. And like, they didn't really like, Canada didn't really fuck with him like that. Right. And so then he he goes with Keenan on and Wayne and like, and then that whole thing right there, because he said, and also it said in the tweet that he wouldn't, he said he got H. Ventura simply because of, uh, of, uh, in living color. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I, 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 when he was I'm he's doing Venus on. de Milo. Venus de Milo is is the male version of. I mean, Venus. Well, yeah, you can say that too. But Venus de Milo is the female version of Ace Ventura. I never seen that. Whoa, wait a minute! You ain't never seen *The Living Color* and uh, Jim Carrey do no. Venus de Milo. I, I, he, he, I, he's supposed to be the bodybuilding chick. I probably seen it and it just like slipped my mind. <laughs> Because yeah. like I watched the Living Color, but it wasn't something where it was like, yo, I'm watching like every episode. You know what I'm oh, saying? It was like, man, yeah, yeah. What? I didn't. It was, hey, my, you know, my mom I made me watch that joint Friday nights. I never forget on Fox. We stayed watching that joint. No, I man, like I told you, like when it comes to comedy, dude, like the only thing I can remember. But see, yeah, I also got to look at it this way: like the one comedy thing. That I used to watch when it used to come on was Mad TV. Oh, okay, see, that yeah. Came, so that's, that's that came out later. later. That's, yeah. yeah, that's later. It came out yeah, later, yeah. and yeah. that's when I was more, you know, what I'm saying into, you know, what I'm saying some of the comedy shit. But like, in Living Color, it was more. <clears throat> but I mean, like in Martin and shit, that's different. Martin is mm-hmm. different. But um, I know you talk. You talking about like the improv variety shows and shit like that. Yeah, 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 yeah shit like that, shit like that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I that was I fucked up on that. But Keenan, Keenan, Keenan changed the game. Like, you know what I'm man, saying? Like didn't. him, 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 and him and um, him and Eddie, man. Yeah. Like they, they really, man. They, they really are like they ran the '90s, cool. bro. They yeah. ran the '90s. Like they, they, man, they, they ran the dude. '90s. Yeah, and they the boot play. Like they they show everybody like look, this is how you do it. Now yeah. when you, if you look at the dates and shit, you know, Keenan probably looked at what Eddie did. Mm-hmm. And was just like, okay, but I'm gonna do well, it the well, TV route. You know Keenan Keenan is a writer on Raw and Delirious. Didn't know that. Yeah. They know that. They know that. And like he he is and then to get his whole family on. And this ain't no situation where it's just like this this is not the well, I'm just putting them on because they're my brothers and sisters. Like, mm-hmm. no, these motherfuckers, no. all of them got talent and correction, funny. correction. Um oh shit, which one is it? I think it's the sec. I think it's. I think it's raw. I don't think it's delirious. I think it's raw because the because delirious is when they um is when they got the band at the beginning, and then I think the um raw is when they got the skit in front of it where he where he was supposed to be young and tell the joke. That's the skit that Keenan wrote. That's why Keenan's a writer in it because he wrote the skit. But I don't know which, whichever one it is. I know Keenan wrote the skit, but I know Keenan was with him in in one of those. So I'm assuming it had to be raw because that's the la- that's the one that came last. So I don't know. I got to go back and look, but but I'm yeah. I know for a fact that he was a writer on one of them. He wrote that beginning skit before the um before the special start. Yeah, I was sitting here looking. I'm trying to see. It yeah, it was it was raw. It was okay. wrong. Keenan, okay. yeah, the opening. I would say because Delirious yep. got the Delirious got the band playing before he actually come out and start. So okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, it was wrong. <clears throat> Keenan, Keenan wrote raw. <clears throat> and see, look and, and look, you know what I'm saying? Eddie Murphy, man. Yeah. Look, it, look, man. He's a whole legend out here. And then yeah. Robert Townsend was the, was the director of yep. raw. I forgot about that. Yeah, Robert Townsend. So that, 
So that really, no, that really go to show you because Robert Townsend, he's one of the ones that been doing it forever. Remember, he was making his own movie since since forever. So you know what I'm saying? That that just go to show us where Eddie and uh you know what I'm saying, where Eddie and Keenan got it from. Yeah, man. People people be slipping on hey man. Eddie's a whole legend out here. And he mm-hmm. kicked a lot, he kicked a lot of shit out for people. But like I say, man, like a lot of people throw around that blueprint word and it's just like, yo, like this dude literally like was the blueprint of this thing. And like if there wasn't no Eddie Murphy, and like we ain't even just talking. Like, I mean, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head, but like we ain't even talking just black people. Like, I'm pretty sure there's been some white people, white comedians that like looked at what Eddie Murphy was doing mm-hmm. and they're like, yo, I need to try to follow this Man. motto of what Eddie Murphy did. Uh uh Steve Martin. You know what I'm saying? Steve Martin. Um uh Dan Aykroyd. Uh shit. I'm trying to think who I was in that SNL with him. Like what, all them dudes from about, SNL. What about uh cause because you think about the how his career went, even though I never thought he was that funny. What, what was my dude name? Uh Meet the parents. Uh, ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. Yeah, Cause you got because you look at what Ben, ben Stiller, Stiller did, one like, of them too. You know what I'm saying? He wrote in all that type of shit, like a lot of mm-hmm. those movies. Meet the parents, meet the fuckers, and mm-hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? Average but Joe's. Ben, ben all Stiller, that type one shit. of them too. Like he, because I, because Ben Stiller was in uh, Tower Heights, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was in uh, Tropic Thunder. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Look, okay, Come let me in. ask you this. Let me ask you yeah. this right quick. Okay, right. I've never had a problem with it. Like they and they keep bringing it up on on the dude show, playing right? the dude who's playing the dude. Yeah. Dude, listen. Robert Daddy G. Do you I, I don't me personally, I don't consider that blackface. That shit it's, was hilarious. The reason I'm sorry. The reason why um the reason why I don't consider it blackface is because it was never like no negative stereotype to it. You know what I'm saying? Like when he when he was doing it, it wasn't like, yes, sir, boss. I shook a job for you, boss. You need some watermelon? Yes, sir. I move on, son. No, sir. Yes, sir. It wasn't none of that. Yeah. Like he was he was like a badass for real. You know what I'm saying? He was like, you know what I'm saying, down in the jungle. Motherfucker, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like to me, I thought the shit was fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought the shit was fucking hilarious because he I was thought like, it was hilarious. That motherfucker was like, "You people get on my nerves." That motherfucker said, "What do you mean, you people?" You people. That nigga said, said what, "What do you, you mean, mean you people?" <laughs> you people. I said, "Look, that motherfucker said, huh? <laughs> that shit was funny <laughs> to me. To me, I think that's probably one of the the, the funniest moments I have ever seen Robert Downey Jr. in outside of Iron Man. That shit was funny to me, man." And I'm and I'm one of them people like and I'm one of them people that I'm not with that shit. Like if I see that shit, I'm looking like, hold on, motherfucker. <coughs> yeah, man, I, I I don't I don't consider that like a bad bad thing. I, I thought that he did. Um, oh. I thought he did a decent job of, you know, what I'm saying not not trying to, you know, what I'm saying be disrespectful. I think it was more so just him because if you really if you really watch the movie, like. He's an Australian dude. He's not even the the character like the, the character that he's playing is a, a <laughs> Australian dude playing that character. Man, listen. So he's <laughs> this is and this is why I say like this is why I say like it's is I didn't take no offense to it because before he even get the blackface on the motherfucker is Australian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like so you know what I'm saying? Funny, like if if anything, we got to be mad at the Australian nigga first. Man, listen, man. But yeah, they, I, I didn't have no beef with that, man. Cause they said that, you know, cause damn believe that we, they couldn't make that movie in yeah. you know what I'm saying, two thousand two thousand one. And I was just like, man, because I'm thinking like I don't well, know. it wasn't it wasn't that bad because he really didn't look like a black dude. I don't know, he kind of did. But, that nigga but looked like a, a well tanned white man. Cause that's just like uh uh what's the dude name? Do the late night show. Kip, oh, uh, that was different. You talking about when Jimmy he did when he did Carl that, Malone? Carl Malone, that's different. Man, I don't know, man. All I know is nah, that is, is funny. That's totally different. That's that's, a, that's out of line. 
Cause that's the that's the only that's the only Ben Stiller movie. Well, hold on. That's not true. I mean, Meet the Parents was cool. Ben Meet Stiller did movie. Blackface too, but he did it with a human. Oh, okay, but I'm off that now. I'm talking like I was talking about like I don't even really consider um dodgeball because I mean like to me like Vince Vaughn was like you know what I'm saying like what to me I don't know I mean it's a, look it's a Ben Stiller movie not Ben Stiller movie but no, I mean Ben to, Stiller stole that movie bro what are you talking about I don't know man Vince Vaughn was hilarious too but the only the only Nobody thing... makes white Goodman bleed on his white shoes. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> Nobody makes white Goodman bleed blood on his white shoes. What are you talking about? <laughs> that nigga... no, that, no, that was and, and, and I like the one part when he showed up at the girl house and um Hey bro, oh, what did he say? Come on, I forgot bro. what he said. <laughs> but like I that but, nigga said I, that nigga said hacha mama. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, man, I'm not fucking with you, man. But nah, like, but anyway, the whole reason we got on, <laughs> he was a damn clown, man. But we got on. That nigga said, I want to get all freaking naughty. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. That's my shit, man. <sighs> You telling me oh. Ben Stiller didn't steal that shit, bro? Hey. You crazy. <laughs> Nobody made white Goodman bleed blood on his on his new white shoes. Oh man, oh man. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what that nigga said. They said nobody makes white Goodman bleed his own blood. Yeah, bro, come on, man. <laughs> oh man, what are you talking about? He stole that oh, shit. Man. He pulled off in that little ass motorcycle with that big ass nigga on the back. <laughs> Nah, I like the part with my man. My man started throwing the wrenches at them. That motherfucker said, hey, bro, that motherfucker said, <laughs> he said, <laughs> that motherfucker Vince um, Vaughn said something to him. I forgot what he said. He said, you know, he said, necessary. <laughs> He said, it's necessary. No, he said, is throwing the wrench necessary? He said, necessary. It's necessary for me to drink my own urine? He said, no. It's sterile and I like the taste. That shit happened. Holy God. Hey, that movie is funny than the motherfucker. Oh, man. Oh. That nigga said, hey, man, you're not a pirate. <laughs> oh. Stop, oh, man. Stop. Oh. Woo. We got to get back on track. Hey, man, I'm too Ooh. sorry. Okay, but the whole point, <laughs> what I was saying, is I think Ben Stiller, even though his dad was an actor, oh man, I, I think that, actually. yeah, I think that you know what I'm saying a lot of people looked at what Eddie Murphy did, man, especially when it when it came to probably coming to America because that's when he like really like his first movie under Eddie Murphy Productions, mm-hmm. and I think people started looking like. Yo, we need to get in that lane. We need to start writing our shit. We need to start producing our shit. We need to start putting our name on it to where mm-hmm. we get in these royalty checks and not just being involved in a movie like Adam, Adam Sandler too. Yeah, yeah, Adam Sandler. Uh, with yeah. uh, what, 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 uh, Happy Madison. Yep, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Judd Apatow. Yep. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like, Judd real. Yeah, I think a lot of these people is like, if it wasn't for Eddie, I mean, people probably would have caught on to it eventually, but like. You he kind of, any kind of comedians that you know send that 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 way, man. Big yeah. for real, for real, for real, for real, man. So like, people got to put, even though, but this is the thing, y'all also got to understand. Like, everything ain't gonna hit. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure, mm-hmm. like, every podcast we do, there's some podcasts that are better than others. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you ain't gonna hit all the time. So like, even though I was saying like, yo, he went on the run with, was just like it was some of those movies I wasn't fucking with. But it's mm-hmm. hard to. They're just like uh. Will Smith, like a lot of people was giving Will Smith grief because yeah. like some of the movies wasn't hitting like the, some of the other ones. Yeah, it was, <clears throat> yeah, so it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like everything ain't gonna be a hit, but even some of the shit that they said wasn't good, I thought was good. 
But see, but, that, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when we talk about Bowfinger, you said you ain't like it. I thought Bowfinger was hilarious. You know what I'm saying? I thought Holy Man was hilarious. I thought Pluto Nash was hilarious. So it's just like, even though, you know what I'm saying, um, you might not get the, the, the actual recognition you're looking for, I still think that with certain movies, you're still going to get the love from your fans. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's people that appreciate you know what I'm saying? Just comedy in itself that I find, you know what I'm saying, the funny in certain movies. Like me, I could find the funny in the movie instantly. Like I see a way, you know, it's like a motherfucker do something and laugh at it, you know what I'm saying, and be sitting here rolling. Like you just, you just see me go, you know what I'm saying, that quick. Like that's yeah. just how, I am with, you know what I'm saying, like anything. So like, especially with a comedy movie, I just find the funniness in, you know what I'm saying, some of the, you know what I'm saying, the, the subtleties in it, like Speaking of coming to America too, I talked about the the uh, funeral scene. Like a lot of people will, will look at that and they won't, you know what I'm saying, understand why I'm laughing. But I find it funny how, you know what I'm saying, that this is his funeral, but he's alive. This nigga is literally in the casket, alive at his funeral. That's funny as shit to me. Like no, <laughs> that's I, got, I, got, fuck. I, I got another funny funeral scene. Mm-hmm. Soul man. You know what oh, I'm when the motherfucker was in the casket with John Legend, mm-hmm. and this motherfucker started chucking John Legend, like, he was saying, "Do he already did?" Hey, another another funny funeral scene, man. And we can wrap it up. But another funny funeral scene is um, death at a funeral with yeah. uh, with yeah. Chris Rock and Martin Lawrence, and the casket fell down. Bro, you talking about funny and uh and Lord uh uh, uh Loretta Devine wig popped off, but that shit had me rolling, bro. That nigga um <laughs> what is that nigga's name, bro? I can't think of it. Um what is the nigga name that played Murtaugh, bro? Murtaugh. I don't know. I'm too old for First this talk. shit. God damn, what is his name? Uh, um, Lethal Weapon. Um, Danny Glover. Danny Glover. Danny, Danny Glover shit it on Tracy Morgan's hand, bro. All this shit was going on. He shit it on Tracy Morgan's hand in that movie. And I cried my ass off watching that movie. That movie was fucking hilarious, bro. Go watch Death at a Funeral if y'all ain't never seen it. Two of two of the people off of Eddie's, you know what I'm saying, tree, Martin Lawrence, um, Chris Rock. They do a hell of a job. Tracy Morgan is in. It's a. It's just a whole bunch. It's just a cast of just funny motherfuckers, and man, they they do a hell of a job when they did that movie. But um, man, that's it for me, man. I know usually we do a top three, but is it really a need to, man? I man, I can't even. I mean, I probably could, saying, like, but it's just like it's it's so much. It's so much good shit, man. Yeah. Um, um we we could do let's just do um just I guess we could do one movie. At least one? one shit one. <sighs> well, that's hard, bud. Okay, hard. put it like this. Um if you was on the island and you had, you know what I'm saying, a portable DVD player, you could take any Eddie Murphy movie with you and you could that's the only movie you'll have to watch while you was on that island. What would you pick? It would have to be if we if if we if you put it that way, stranded mm-hmm. on the island. I would have to say Beverly Hills Cop two. Beverly Hills Cop two. Okay, okay. The reason uh, I say that because I just saw like the last scene that I saw mm-hmm. was when they went to the uh, strip club and he said that he was uh the uh, former president uh Gerald Ford. <laughs> <laughs> but I say that movie because that was in a strip club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, listen. Hey, I gotta look at something, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Island. I'm on an island by myself. Um, and for that reason, is you know what I'm saying? Not that's one of the reasons I'm picking coming to America too. I mean, not coming to America too. Coming to America. I'm sorry. The original one, Coming to America, man. You talking about funny, quotable? I could watch that motherfucker. I don't care. Like I told y'all before, I don't care. When that motherfucker start, I could come in at the time Randy watching is at the youth benefit for the church singing, you know what I'm saying, to make sure, 
you know what I'm saying, that they get that money for the church, man, and I'm I'm in there. Um, now, put a chicken bone in there. Man, listen, you don't put no chicken bone in there, man. It's just <laughs> donation. <laughs> man. That motherfucker said that way. Good, terrible. Good there, bro. <laughs> Don't get me started. Bro. Don't get me started, bro. Oh, I'm, gonna do that shit all day. I'm gonna do that shit all day, oh, man. But, man. Um, yeah, man. I, I would do coming to America only because you know, so like you said, it's, it's boobies in there, but not just that, man. It's just the quotables from there. Um, it's classic moments in there. It's still to this day, like I'll be watching that movie, man, and it's still shit that I, I catch that I ain't seen. So um, yeah. Uh, definitely coming to America. Um, man, that was that was a good one, bro. Um, you already know um, this Friday, man, we coming right back. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be another one. Uh, man, listen, there's two episodes left, bro. Yeah, man. That's it's sad. sad. Man, it's getting sad, man. <laughs> man we said that at the same time. <laughs> Shit. Um, oh man, it's been the hell. I ain't gonna lie, it's been a hell of a season. Um, been super hey, excited and, and big. And listen, listen, big ups to you, man. It was it was your idea. Yeah, you know what I'm saying to to do snowfall uh, episode by episode, mm-hmm. man. Glad glad you came up with that, man. Because yeah, it's, hey, it's, listen, it's, it's been dope doing it. Is that's what happened, man? Like I told you, that's what happened when you work with somebody who who you can bounce those ideas off of and get that same energy, man. That we we've been coming up with some great ideas lately, so you know what I'm saying. That was just one of the ones that happened to work. But um, you know what I'm saying. We're gonna get into episode what nine? Yes, it'll be episode nine. Episode yeah, nine, man. Man. Um, shit starting to hit the fan. Um, mm-hmm. it's some traders. You know what I'm saying. Uh. Man, you know what I'm saying? Snitches is getting stitches. And um, I couldn't be more happy. I'm not going to lie to you, man. This, <laughs> this episode eight, bro, I watched that motherfucker five times, man. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, man. Only I'm, I ring got fucked up. <clears throat> yes, sir, man. She, she, well, you know what I'm saying? They gave her a teaser. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Letting her know, like, yo. Next time, that's your ass. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I, I like, like, you know what I'm saying? We already gave our predictions, man. Mm-hmm. Um, just that, you know, I, I hate the fact that there are some people that that fuck with us, but, like, man, they don't fuck with uh, Snowfall, though, man, so they ain't even getting that good content, man. Like, like our boy, mm-hmm. E, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? E, e, like, you know what I'm saying? He hasn't been watching this episode because he want to binge it all, so right. I doubt that he's been listening to the uh, Snowfall episodes. That's and Casey. Cool. Just- it's a that's a good little guy for them to go back and listen to now. You know what I'm saying? After they catch up on it, they can go back, check it out, and bam. You know what I'm saying? They'll let us know what they think. Yeah, man. And like Casey, you know, he don't watch it. So but man, yeah. we've been put we've been putting in work on those episodes, man. Those have been like some very, very great episodes, man, that we've been putting out. So for sure. So for we got sure. we got another one coming Friday, man. Yep. Episode nine, man, season four. Um, you know what I'm saying? Be there, be square. You know what I'm saying? We go live every Friday. Um, so y'all already know what it is, man. Um, feel free to comment, all that good stuff. Make sure that y'all subscribe. Make sure that y'all hit that notification bell. Um, Scoots Bronson TV. Uh, Instagram is coming so for the Viewers Anonymous uh, podcast. Link tree is up, so you know you can find us wherever you need us. Um, everything on there. Uh, if you would like to... Uh, if you would like to know where you can find us at, you can go to Facebook first and foremost, and then um, you can hit us up on the VA podcast watch group. That's where all of the information for the podcast is. That's where all the videos is, the link tree, everything else, wherever you need to find us. That's where we are. We also put some of our other content on there as well. You know what I'm saying? That way you can kind of know what's going on and then it keeps you in there, but just, you know what I'm saying? Send that, um, Send that request, man. We'll definitely uh, get you in there. The numbers are are growing steadily. Um, it's looking good. Man, let me tell you something. You guys have been showing us so much support. We thank you guys so much. Um, follow me on Twitter at Scoots Bronson. Follow me on Instagram at Scoots Bronson underscore TV. And, uh, like I said, man, if you're not watching, you can watch us on uh, Scoots Bronson TV on YouTube every Tuesday and Friday. Man, we being we we getting to it, man. <clears throat> yes, sir, man. And um, 
I don't know when the last time we checked it, but you know what I'm saying? We up to six ratings now. Um, but we did address the one one star that we got. So yeah. you know what I'm saying? But the other five are five stars. So I appreciate everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? We sit at a four point five right now. Mm-hmm. So um but you know what I'm saying, if y'all listen on Apple, man, you know, uh just uh you know, whatever you feel, you know, leave a comment or you can, you know, hit a rating, man, just so we can see where we at. Um, like you said, the VA podcast watch group page. Um, also go check out the Stolen Time Pod on Instagram, s.foster8 on Instagram and Twitter. Um, go still go to the uh, Stolen Time Podcast uh, page on Facebook. Um, you know, just put out a, a great 28 minutes or less with the guy. Long scoops, you know, he came on with me. You know, what I'm saying we we dedicated like the first 30 minutes to DMX. Um, you know, another rest in peace to him. And uh, we talked about sample music, man. That we had some great conversations on there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what I'm saying Mia X gave us 15 minutes of talking time. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but yes, um, yeah, man. But uh, it was it was some it was some great shit, man. So uh, everybody go check out that last 28 minutes or less. That'll be episode 41. Um, and I still, I still got some, uh, something coming out for the Stolen Time podcast. So be on the lookout for that. And also before we get out of here, man, prayers up to uncle Washington, you know what I'm saying? My guy, my, uh, co-host of the Stolen Time podcast, you know, he's still dealing with some things, but you know, just, uh, you know, just be thinking about him. Cause you know, he, he, he's really, he, he, (laughs) I think I think his biggest disappointment in all of this is that he he hasn't been able to pod, man. You know, so uh, <laughs> it's he, a big he, he, yeah, man, it is, and and I know he's been wanting to. So you know, just be thinking about him, man. For sure, man. So um, we up out of here, you guys. Thanks for the support. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Um, see you guys Friday. Y'all already know what it is. It's snowfall time. That being said, man, like they say in Hollywood, it's a wrap. Good. <laughs>